Hello everyone. Tomorrow is Yom HaShoah, which means Holocaust, Martyrs and Heroes Day. It's the day when Jewish communities commemorate the brutal premeditated murder of a full two-thirds of European Jews and is observed annually around the same time as the anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising of 1943. We have decided to present our concert today in commemoration of Yom HaShoah. Prior to the Holocaust, uh, Vienna was one of the grandest and most important centres of both musical and Jewish life. The music you are listening to is the Adagiato by Gustav Mahler from his Fifth Symphony. Mahler's connection to Vienna is very strong. He studied at the Conservatoire and conducted in the Opera House there. But having died in 1911, he did not uh, live to witness the Nazi ban on his music and that of countless other Jewish composers. His niece, his niece Alma Rose, um, was a fine Viennese violinist who felt it was to be made the conductor of the Women's um, Orchestra at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Um, a juxtaposition of making music whilst burning bodies. Alma Rose perished there in 1944. Um, we are very privileged to have personally uh, met and know um, Anita Lasker-Valfish, um, who lives today and survived the camp and uh, speaks of her experiences. She played the cello under the baton of uh, Alma Rose in the camp. Um, she became the mother of Raphael Valfish, one of the finest cellists of his generation, and she is the grandmother of Benjamin Valfish, who is a celebrated um, Hollywood composer. Um, my father, Geoffrey Wilson, was his first composition teacher. The Viennese connection for me is via my great-grandfather, Joseph Buchacha, who lived there in the mid-1920s, um, and he was born in Poland in 1899. The Buchacha family moved from Poland to Vienna um, for a better way of life. The removal of Jewish people from German society was particularly well planned and was referred to as the uh, final solution to the Jewish question. Um, across Nazi-occupied Europe, uh, about six million Jews perished, including my great-grandfather, Joseph Buchacha. The violence of Kristallnacht, Night of Broken Glass, um, throughout the Third Reich in November 1938, was particularly brutal in Vienna. Um, in an orgy of utter destruction, Jewish homes, shops and synagogues uh, were torched, and thousands of Jews were pulled from their homes and thrown into the early uh, concentration camps. The Buchacha family became victims of the Nazi pogrom, uh, with Joseph uh, being finally arrested in Belgium and transported to uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau on the 11th of August 1942, where he was murdered on the 20th of that month. Joseph's son Fritz, my grandfather, um, escaped Nazi tyranny uh, alone, saved by the Kinder Transport scheme. Um, he arrived at uh, London Liverpool Street in London on Christmas Eve 1938, where he later uh, married my grandmother, uh, Joyce, and the rest, as they say, is, is history. Doing some family research, um, the composer, Geoffrey Wilson, my father, um, recently discovered a resource in Belgium called uh, Give Them a Face Portrait a collection. So it was uh, there where we discovered the photo of Joseph and could at last put a face to the name that we've had in our heads and hearts for years and years and years now. Joseph in Vienna is an orchestral piece that my dad composed the day that he discovered the photo and it is, of course, dedicated to Joseph Buchacha. Oh, and I should also mention um, my name is also Joseph.
Hello, everyone. It falls to me to introduce my good friend, Mr. Larry Berkowitz, now, who offers a, a wonderful rendition of For All We Know by Fred Coots, Sam Lewis. If I may. Under the shadow of the looming Holocaust, ominous dark clouds gather and a foreboding, a premonition of uncertainty, unfolds.
overcome score by Avram Harris. Avram, in studying composition as he does at uh, Junior Guildhall, uh, was asked to look at um, pictures and p potentially to write music according to that stimulus. And in his uh, Sunday uh, Shedda, a uh, Jewish religion school, he looked at pictures by Chagall. I will quote Avram if I may. The villages Chagall paints are like the ones that my family fled from when they emigrated to the UK during the Second World War. Chagall often represents musical instruments in his work, which is just as well because Avram is a cellist, so he responded rather well to that and composed for and recorded himself on top of himself, as it were, during lockdown. So he's conceived of this work as a composer and performs it as a cellist. Avram experimented with sounds on the instrument to create klezmer-like sounds. And sound worlds that he explored included the exploration of the modes variously referred to in Jewish music, sometimes called Fregish or Freilish. In the end, he settled on his own version of that. He plays with time, and the sense of improvisation is palpable. I love it. Best if I quote Avram again. I knew I wanted a beginning, with the idea of active village life, a middle part with quiet reflection, a sense of the threats to the villagers, and finally an echo, a sort of cry from the past, from a simple lone voice, maybe a child's voice, speaking for all the people who were killed. The filming came last of all, and in the, in the composing process, and the works of Chagall combine with other pictures, best yet again, if I quote Avram in his own work. Pictures painted by children my own age, who were held in a concentration camp before being deported to be killed, and I found them very sad. I used some of those for the ending of the film. They are speaking directly to us from the past, and I wanted it to be their voices which are heard at the end. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I am so thrilled to be part of today's special concert, so thank you so much for inviting me back. Today we will play you a track from a live concert from my project, Postcards from Europe, which is a violin and piano duo. It's a research and communication project which centres on the cultural, political and social events of 1930s Central Europe. In particular, it brings to the public the suppressed voices of the musicians deemed by the regime of the Third Reich to be entartita, degenerate and banned. Some of these composers managed to emigrate, but of course others perished in concentration camps. We research and play their music, tell their stories, giving voice again to their lost musical tradition. And we seek to honour both their lives and the lives of those who suffered during this period of persecution. The recording you'll hear today is from a live concert in 2013, which was made shortly before my dear Robert's death. I had to think long and hard as to whether to continue to play this music and to continue with our project. But I decided that is exactly what Robert would have wanted me to do. So today, I give these performances with the wonderful pianist Nigel Yandel. The piece that you're going to hear today is by Robert Dalber and it's called Serenade. Now. Robert Dalber was the son of Dol Dalber, who led a famous light orchestra in Prague in the 1930s. In September 1942, however, Robert Dalber was taken away and imprisoned in Terezin concentration camp, northwest of Prague, by the border with Germany. Conditions were extremely harsh, yet in one of the more surreal examples of Nazi tyranny, the prisoners of Terezin were permitted, indeed often forced, into artistic activity. Here, Robert Dalber, who was only 19 at the time, played the cello in a string quartet. And he also composed this serenade for violin and piano. It is his only known work. In September 1944, he was transported to Auschwitz-Birkenau and later to Dachau, where he lost his life on the 25th of March 1945 at the age of 23. While he was imprisoned in Terezin, he managed to send a postcard to his mother, where he wrote... Mama, I just hope one day somebody will play my serenade for violin and piano. So it is an enormous privilege for us to be able to play this piece for you today, to bring the voice of this young Robert Dalber to you. So here is the serenade by Robert Dalber. Thank you. Thank you. 
We conclude with thanks to you for listening to us and being there. How wonderful to end with Larry Berkowitz, Zach Barrett and friends from a concert in 2012 at the Cranbourne Theatre in Chelsea. Some Yiddish for you and a sense of great fun had on stage. Be mir, be schön. I think I'll leave it there and say a big thank you to everybody who took part in this concert. Thank you all.
Mr. Shame means that you're grand. Ooh, yeah. By me, Mr. Shame, again I'll explain. It means you're the fairest in the land. Say you'll understand. But me, Mr. Shane, see you soon.